In the last video clip, I discussed the idea of stable equilibria and unstable equilibria. And tonight, I want to discuss whether the idea of an unstable equilibrium describes the natural theology we're developing. So to recap, the idea of a stable equilibrium or balance is like a ball in a bowl. Shake the ball, and the ball moves, but eventually it comes back to balance. Here, this is an unstable equilibrium. If the ball starts rolling to one side or the other, it doesn't stop, and it goes either here or here. I applied this concept to beliefs. I said that if uh, the belief that fire will burn you is a stable equilibrium applies to that belief, because if someone disbelieves it, so let's suppose the ball goes up here, eventually they'll get burnt, and the ball will come down, and they'll accept that belief. Unstable equilibria, I applied last time to uh, sexuality. I said that reasonable sane sexuality, let's say, is here, but some people fall to one side of it and they get excessive and even do illegal criminal acts, and other people sometimes fall to the other side of it and get very religious and get very anti-sexual, or at least very puritanical. And so the idea was that maybe a sane sexuality is a path that's somewhat hard to follow, that you're liable to fall to one side or another, not a person, but maybe society in general people tend to fall to one side or the other. Now, the idea is, does this concept apply to the natural theology we're developing? And I'll pause a second to bring up a spreadsheet. And this is all very loose. It's like when you, uh, you're in a restaurant and you scribble some ideas on a napkin, and they're all very crude, just to capture the idea. So. I can't take this to, uh, some of these things are very loose, but anyway, let's continue. In the first video clip, I talked about a God who is a person, and our idea of God is ultimate ground of existence, or subsistent being. The atheist has no God. In this clip, I talked about how religious people typically do what could be called biased natural theology. They have their conclusions, and they're trying to find the reason to support those conclusions. We, on the other hand, are trying to do unbiased natural theology, a free inquiry into God, existence, whatever. Atheists don't inquire into God because they've decided there is no God. In this clip, I talked about the, the child's epistemological method is somebody said so. And that's what religion uses, basically. If it's in scripture, it must be true. We try to have a more scientific-like epistemological method. And uh, here I said, I suppose atheists typically accept the scientific method. As I said, this is a loose classification. Here I talked about how religion often provides a snug, small universe for its believers. Fundamentalist Christianity, the world is 10,000 years old, uh, et cetera, et cetera. We, live in, we acknowledge that we live in an incomprehensibly huge universe. Atheists, I guess, could do either. In this clip, I talked about how Religion often says, don't doubt, just believe. And even your eternal salvation depends on your belief. For us, we test beliefs and we reason. And again, I suppose atheists do that too, although maybe not necessarily. In this clip, I talked about how a lot of religious people believe that the morality is derived from some revelation, but it really isn't. We acknowledge that our morality comes from society, and I suppose atheists do too. Now, I should mention here that the idea here is that if natural theology is described by the concept of an unstable equilibrium, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we're in the middle, and on one side is organized religion, and on the other side is atheism. And so maybe that's an indication of the truth of what we're developing, that somehow we split the middle, and I guess we, we uh, uh, satisfy people, we, we, we leave people on either side, of the spectrum dissatisfied. Well, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that shows we're on to something. Maybe not. Okay, in this clip, I talked about how that religions accept God's uh, existence as ontologically real, as fundamental. God's or God really exists. For us, only the one, only, only the ultimate ground of being has ultimate reality. God's, if they exist, and we can't say they don't, but if they exist, they're creatures, they're created beings just like us. And I suppose for atheists, 
the, the universe is, ont is, is the fundamental ontological reality and they acknowledge no other. Just to pause a second to advance this. In these two clip, clips, we talked about experience of God. Religions, typically, if uh, they would describe an experience of God as an experience of some person, someone will say they've felt Jesus in their heart or they talked to Jesus or whatever, for instance, in Christianity. For us, such experience would be experience of the ultimate ground of existence, a pure, undifferentiated being. I suppose the atheist just accepts experience of the mundane world, I suppose. Although maybe, I say later on, maybe they accept peak experiences as some sort of extraordinary experience, but still natural. In this clip, I talked about ontology and epistemology. The religious ontologies, they accept the, nat the existence of the natural world and the supernatural world. And the epistemological method is typically what scripture says. For us, we accept the natural world plus the ultimate ground of existence. Our epistemology is what reason says. The atheists is similar, except they just accept the natural world, but I don't think go to that depth that we do with the ultimate ground of existence. In these clips, I mentioned how if you see the universe as created, then it's distinct from God. And duality just means that the universe has uh, opposites, good, bad, hot, cold, up, down. For us, we accept duality too, but we also believe that you can have an experience of the one of the reality that underlies all creation. And I suppose for atheists, they just accept the universe as brute fact. I'll reiterate again, this is just very loose, uh, very, just to show that we're more or less between the two extremes of organized religion and atheism. In this one, typically religions accept a God who is separate from creation. Our God is inherent in creation, in a sense is creation. Atheists deny God exists, or at least they don't accept that a God exists. There's a difference between hard and soft atheism, which I won't get into. In this one, uh, as I said uh, above, that religions accept gods as ultimately real, where we accept them as if any higher being exists, it's still a creature like us. We only accept one ultimate reality. And uh, atheists, I don't think, don't accept any kind of higher being. Although maybe some think that aliens exist or something, I don't know. I'll pause again to advance this. Okay, returning in this clip, religions typically typically accept heaven and hell as eternal, or they accept reincarnation as something that happens. Now for us, since we don't know what consciousness is, we said it's theoretically possible that consciousness exists beyond death. But not that it exists eternally, because for us there's only one, which is eternal, only one thing. I don't know if it exists after death or not, if it persists or not. Atheists typically deny the possibility of life after death. In this one, I talked about how religions typically defend dogma against all reason. Disillusionment but many people consider bad, unpleasant. Now, this disillusionment can be unpleasant, but it should also be exhilarating. If we're searching for truth and we just lost an illusion, that should be a cause for celebration. Even if there's some pain, maybe it was a prized illusion. Maybe we're kind of shocked at, to find out it's not true. I don't know what to say about atheists. I guess if they could go either way, I don't know. Well, not that they have dogma, but anyway, I left a question mark there. Here, human life, its meaning and purpose. Well, religions typically... That's dictated by God. There is a meaning, a purpose to life. For us, it's our choice. We make life what we wish. And atheists typically will say the same thing. In this episode on created light, the Eastern Orthodoxy accepts uncreated light as a manifestation of God. For us, it'd be kind of reversed. We Uncreated light would be God, or we would see God as a manifestation of uncreated light if any created gods exist who would be creatures. Uh, atheists don't accept gods. This one, well, a question of solace. How do you, how do you console people who've suffered a terrible tragedy? Well, religion has that one down well. There's a good God who has a purpose for everything. You're going to spend an eternity in heaven. You'll be reunited with your loved ones. We really don't have a good source of solace at present. Atheists, I, I don't know. I guess um, I, I don't know what to say about that. Defining God. 
Again, for religion, God refers to an objective reality, uh, the word God. For us, the word God refers to whatever we choose to regard as supreme and ultimate. And for atheists, God is a useless word because they don't accept the existence of a God. Okay, here, cosmic consciousness means union or experience of some God who is a person. For us, it's union or with our experience of the ultimate ground of existence. And as I said, maybe atheists accept the idea of peak experiences in some sense, but in, I suppose in a secular sense. Here, well, religions don't like to be criticized. They consider it blasphemy, but they don't mind criticizing other religions. For us, we just say what we think, basically. And I think probably that's what atheists do, I suppose. I don't know. Lastly, truth and faith. Religions typically have faith in scripture and dogma. We have faith in existence in the universe itself. And I suppose, maybe it's unfair to say that atheists have no faith. They have faith in things. So as they say, this has been a very uh, loose suggestive, but not, I mean, a lot of these choices here that I did could be argued and, you know, modified, made more accurate. But the idea is, if natural theology is, can be described as an unstable equilibrium, with the idea being that on one side is typical religion and on the other side is atheism, maybe, just maybe, that is an indication of its truth and of its sanity. Or maybe not. Thanks for listening.